Hi, hello. We are going to be talking about Samurott, the seven star bug Terra raid that is coming this weekend. And I spent six hours making six Pokemon that you can use for Samurott and hopefully feel comfortable. As always, I'm going to tell you how these six Pokemon work and how they work together without knowing Samurott's moveset. But I do have some suspicions uh, based on what we can see. And that's the first thing I do. So if you don't come to my raid build streams, uh, we look at all of its physical attacks, we look at all of its special attacks, and then we look at all its status type moves, and we see what is reasonable and what kind of theme would exist. Now, a theme would be something for like Greninja. In that situation, Greninja ends up being a poison type. That is not a stretch for ninjas to have poison type. Just look at Koga doing ninja things when it opens, which is like double team and toxic spikes. There's like a theme there. With Pikachu, the theme of surfing Pikachu, uh, setting up rain, using surf, having thunder be 100% accurate in the rain, you not being able to do electric type damage to it because of a lightning rod. These Pokemon seem to have a core ideal that the moves and statuses uh, expand from. So specifically with Samurott, we can look at its moves. It has a ton of physical moves, but not that many special moves. Uh, and it doesn't have a ton of status moves going on. And it is a mixed attacker, so its attack stat is 100 and its special attack is 108. That being said, I think it's going to lean into its physical attack because its physical attack pool is just so much deeper than its special attack. While I do think it may have one or two special attacks, just like Decidueye, I think we're really going to see a physical attacker. Now, status moves, we have something like Focus Energy, Encore, Swords Dance, Scary Face, Rain Dance, and Taunt. Talking about that theme, I think it's very likely that Samurott is going to be our focus energy Pokemon. Now, focus energy is going to increase the critical hit rate of moves it uses. And while it does have Sword Stance, I don't think Game Freak is going to give us two Sword Stancers in a row. On top of that, I think Sword Stance and Focus Energy is a bit of overkill. And why I say that is Decidueye didn't open with Sword Stance. All the other raid Pokemon, Pikachu opening with Rain Dance, Greninja opening with Double Team, Cinderace opening with bulk up. Decidueye didn't open with anything. And I think that's probably because Decidueye opening with Sword Stance might have been a little bit too strong for players. I mean, at the end of the day, even though these raids are supposed to be a little bit tougher than what we're used to, at the end of the day, Game Freak does want players to be able to catch these Pokemon. And I don't think Encore, Scary Face, or Taunt really fit the theme of this Pokemon. Now, to back up the theme of Focus Energy, Samurott gets a bunch of high critical moves. Uh, Slash, Aqua Cutter, Drill Run, and Night Slash are all moves that have high critical rate. Now, some people might say Excisor. Excisor is no longer high crit. It was only high crit in Legends Arceus. And because of the bug Terra type, we might see either Megahorn or Excisor being one of those two main moves that it's using. Did I say Slash? Slash is high crit too. Uh, we also get access to Aerial Ace, Sacred Sword, Avalanche, Smart Strike. There's a lot of moves that can exist here. On the special side, I see Air Slash. While Air Slash isn't high crit, it does also fit a theme of slashing. Night Slash, Air Slash, uh, Slash, uh, Aqua Cutter. I, you could rename that to Aqua Slash, I guess. X Scissor is like a slash. That's why, again, I think we're seeing going to see a Focus Energy Pokemon. I could be completely wrong, and hopefully I'm not, because uh, all of my calculations that I ran for EVs and for natures and for movesets are all based around every move having crit at all times. So it was very important for me to pick Pokemon that could survive non-stop critical hits and be able to return damage back. Before we get into my six that I that uh, we're going to go through, I want to talk about a couple Pokemon that aren't going to appear in this list. Uh, first is Corviknight. While I do expect players to use Corviknight, I don't think it's the best pick. I actually built a six. Uh, I actually built a Corviknight for six star raid, five and six star raids, and it's fine. And that's really the most I can say about Corviknight is it's fine. It can do screens, although critical hit ignores screens. But there are better screeners. Bulk up is is slow. Drill peck doesn't do a lot of damage. You don't ever want to use recoil moves in raids unless you know for sure you're going to be able to one shot the boss. And a negative six defense Samurott in a plus six attack Corviknight with Life Orb with Brave Bird doesn't even come close to one shotting the boss. Uh, even the helping hand doesn't save it there. Drill Peck is kind of your best option for flying type moves. And while Corviknight does 
have uh, decent stats and decent resistances, uh, I do just kind of feel like it's dead weight. I don't think it's the worst Pokemon to bring to this raid. And actually, I have a Pokemon that will make Corviknight much, much better if you do see Corviknights in the raids. But I, I can't, uh, you know, Corviknight's not in my top six is, is what it comes down to. Let's talk about Pelipper, another bird. I think it's very foolish to bring a Pokemon whose whole gimmick is to set up rain when the boss's original typing is water and rain would boost that typing. Now, I ran damage calculations and for the most part, Pelipper is fine against Samurott. I'm not worried about Pelipper. I'm worried about people bringing Pelipper, setting up rain and the Pokemon sitting next to Pelipper taking more damage. For example, with Corviknight, Corviknight would survive two critical hit water type moves coming from Samurott, just barely. It's about 47 to 50%. If Corviknight is sitting next to a Pelipper, uh, all of a sudden that jumps to about 75% damage that Corviknight would take from a water type move. If there's four Pelippers, I guess that's okay. But again, um, we know that we know 100% that Samurott will have a water type move and we know 100% Samurott will have a bug type move just based on the two typings that it's bringing into this raid. I don't think it's smart to bring a Pokemon to set up rain, which would boost that damage coming from Samurott. You could get away with bringing a keen eye um, or a rain dish Pelipper and not set up the rain. But at that point, you're not getting 100% accuracy in Hurricane. And I, again, it goes back to I think there are better Pokemon to bring. Finally, there's Coridon, and I think Coridon's okay. I don't really have a whole bunch of complaints, except um, that uh, I don't prefer physical attackers for raids, because once the shield goes up, you can no longer use something like Screech. But with a special attacker, you can continue using something like Acid Spray. Also hard to recommend Coridon because it's a legendary that half the player base doesn't have. <laughs> so this is the Maridon issue for Decidueye. Uh, if you bought violet which i think more people bought violet than scarlet and you don't have anyone to play with or you don't have anyone to trade or no one wants to trade you your extra coridon uh coridon are and maridon are kind of hard to get right now so it's really hard to suggest a pokemon that you just can't jump into a raid to get at least with like paradox pokemon you can catch as many as you want you can want to trade them away or you can feel comfortable trading them to somebody but not a lot of people probably willing to give up coridon unless it's probably for a maridon in return and I do have a whole list of Pokemon that uh, we went through and we calculated. And again, my main calculation was if Samurott is able to crit as often as possible, can we survive? The great thing about that is this is worst case scenario. If Samurott doesn't have focus energy and doesn't crit, these Pokemon are even better than what I predicted. And if I'm wrong about uh, focus energy over Swords Dance, uh, Swords Dance is a lot easier to control than focus energy. There's really no way to get rid of focus energy once it goes up. Something like Haze does not remove focus energy uh, or clear smog. Those remove stat changes and focus energy is not technically considered a stat change. Although I do suspect uh, kind of a similar thing to Decidueye where focus energy may go up halfway through the raid. I think if you were to look at current raid bosses, uh, Annihilate with focus energy can be very tricky. And if you're unaware of how critical hits work, uh, critical hits ignore stuff like light screen and reflect and they also ignore stat changes a negative two attack samurai will still do its normal damage plus crit it ignores that negative two just like if you're a corviknight with a plus six defense critical hit will ignore that defense change now you'll see a lot of these pokemon have chilling water that's because i do suspect that the early game will not have the focus energy activated right away and we do also have a pokemon that can taunt which can hopefully prevent that focus energy from going up. Okay, our first Pokemon is something I'm really excited about uh, and is going to be Cloyster. Cloyster has the ability Shell Armor, which actually prevents all crits from happening. Cloyster can lead off with Chilling Water. Even though Ice is not super effective against Bug, you do get the Ice type stab from Ice Beam and Ice Beam is consistent. We also have Life Dew to heal our team. And finally, we have Snowscape. So in, in a situation where maybe Samurott wants to set up Rain, we can get rid of Rain for Snow. Snow is different than Hail, so your teammates are not going to take damage from Snow. Snow, also in this generation, will boost your physical defense. So Snowscape is really good if you have two or even three Cloisters on your side, because all of your Cloister, all of your Ice-type Pokemon, will get a defense boost uh, on top of not being able to get crit. Now, Blizzard would be 100% accurate in, in Snowscape, 
but Blizzard has five PP, and um, we want consistent damage, and we want to be able to Ice Beam as often as possible in between healing and chilling watering. Uh, we're going to do the Icy Rock to let Snowscape last eight turns, so we don't have to worry about that. If you are playing with other Cloister users, not everyone needs Snowscape, of course. Uh, you can opt for a, a Light Screen in that slot or a Helping Hand in that slot. With a chilling water and with a snowscape, with one literally one chilling water and snowscape up, Cloyster becomes pretty indestructible. Uh, and when Cloyster is sitting next to other Pokemon that could acid spray, even though, again, it's not super effective damage, it is really good consistent damage. The next Pokemon I want to talk about is Toxapex. This is actually the same Toxapex I built a couple months ago. Uh, I believe we built it for Cinderace, um, and it's actually really great for five and six star raids. So even if you don't use it a lot for this raid, you can use it for a lot of six and a lot of five and six star raids. Same move set of Chilling Water, Acid Spray, Sludge Bomb, Venoshock. You could opt to maybe switch in Baneful Bunker because of the physical moves. That's an automatic poison. Although Sludge Bomb is a thirty percent, you could also opt for Recover. I've used Toxapex a ton, I think in 30 to 35 raids. I've only hit Recover like once or twice. Heal Cheer is definitely there for you. And then we have Poison Barb, just to do a little bit more. Now, unfortunately, unless you have a way to remove Samurott's ability of Shell Armor, you cannot crit it with Merciless, uh, which Merciless is 100% uh, crit if the Pokemon is poisoned. But we have a way to get rid of that later on. Uh, I also want to include Toxapex on here in case people didn't have time to build a new raid counter for this weekend. Because like I said, I built Toxapex around the time Cinderace came out. So if you've been following my raid build since then, you can just bring Toxapex if you, you know, you're just short on time this weekend. This raid is coming very fast right off the heels of Decidueye. Oddly enough, uh, our next Pokemon, Dragalge, has the same moveset. Um, Dragalge actually hits so much harder, though, and it has the ability Adaptability. STAB, which stands for same type attack bonus, gives you a 50% increase when you use a move. So for example, if you were a Garchomp using Earthquake, Earthquake normally does 100 damage, but because Garchomp is ground type, that's the same type attack bonus. A Garchomp using an Earthquake would actually do 150 damage versus a Dragonite using an Earthquake. I don't know if Dragonite can learn Earthquake. The, the, the point being is Dragonite's not ground, therefore Earthquake does 100 damage. Garchomp is ground, therefore Earthquake does 150 damage. With Adaptability, you actually do twice the amount of damage. So, in this case, if Dragalge was ground and used Earthquake, Earthquake would do 200 damage instead of 150 or 100. This, this ties back to why I don't think Corviknight's that great in general, is because Dragalge ends up doing more damage with Sludge Bomb Venoshock than Corviknight could with Drill Peck, just because of adaptability alone. And even though Corviknight is going to be hitting super effective Drill Packs, Venoshock ends up doing about 50 to 60 more damage quicker than Corviknight can even set up. We did a lot of math on this. Trust me, it's just Dragalge ends up doing a ton of damage uh, just because of adaptability. Like similar Pokemon, you probably want to start off with a Chilling Water, Acid Spray three times, Sludge Bomb for Poison, then switch over to Venoshock. We're putting the Assault Vest on Dragalge just in case of the couple special type moves that Samurott might get. Mostly Ice Beam. Ice Beam and Air Slash are probably the two highest that Samurott can get here. Um, so the Assault Vest is only works when the Pokemon has all attacking type moves. And the Assault Vest turns an ice beam into uh, a three shot instead of a two shot. And we don't have to then put any investment into special defense. Speaking of not being able to crit Samurott because of its ability, uh, we have Driplum here, which can actually help with that. Now, Driplum takes a lot of damage from a lot of moves right off the bat, but Driplum gets uh, the move skill swap. So, Driplum will give its ability to Samurott and take Samurott's ability away. And when Driplum takes Samurott's ability of shell armor and gives it to itself, all of a sudden Driplum becomes incredibly good for this raid uh, because you no longer have to worry about crits. We're going to put the wide lens on Driplum. That will make Air Slash 100%. That will also make Will-O-Wisp go from about 85% to about 93%. And then we can focus energy ourselves because we are able to crit Samurott back once we remove its ability. You're going to obviously want to skill swap first, and then you're going to want to Will-O-Wisp, focus energy, and then spam Air Slash. 
if you're worried about water type stuff or you are playing with Pokemon that lean into fire type moves, you could opt for Sunny Day. You could also opt for Strength Sap to get health back. Uh, the only problem with Strength Sap is it doesn't work once the shield goes up. And for Driplum, the two abilities don't actually matter here. Aftermath only matters when you die. Uh, that's not going to matter when it's on Samurott because once it's dead, it's dead. Uh, and Unburdened's not going to matter on Samurott because un in order for Unburdened to activate, you have to use an item. So you're going to give Samurott Unburdened or Aftermath and because Samurai doesn't have an item to use, it will never activate. Ability-wise, it doesn't matter too much with Driplum. But I, th I think the removing the ability and the early Will-O-Wisp will be very great for a lot of teams going forward. Real realistically, you don't want more than one Driplum on a team because only one Driplum can steal the ability <laughs> from the Samurai, And you, you need to steal the ability to make Driplum viable. Uh, also, just keep in mind, if Driflum does die, it comes back with its original ability. So that would be really bad. So if if you're more of a novice player, I wouldn't recommend using Driflum. And if you do have a Driflum on your team, just pay attention to its health. You know, if it, if it's out of heal cheers, I heal cheer it, obviously, because Driflum will survive a lot once it gets shell armor. Um, but obviously, if if it does faint, well, it won't faint because of critical hits because it can't get critical hit. Uh, but if it does faint, it's going to come back with Aftermath or Unburden, whatever it started with. Before I get to the next Pokemon, if these raid videos are helpful to you and if they make your life a little bit easier, please consider hitting the subscribe button, hit the like button, maybe leave a comment of which Pokemon you're excited to use for the raids. I spend hours calculating and trying to narrow down Pokemon that are not only fun to use or unique to use, but work really cohesively with other Pokemon. So. We have a big community over on Twitch and in Discord, and they love playing together, and it's really great when Pokemon synergize together really well. I'm, I love doing these videos, and I love making these builds. They take a lot of time, so again, if if these are really helpful to you, uh, I would appreciate the, the comment, the like, the subscribe, all that stuff. We talked about Coridon and Corviknight earlier, and I built a physical Pokemon that you can pair next to those. So just like how if you see a Driflum in a raid or, you, or the Driflum, you only want one Driflum to come. If you are playing with randoms or maybe your friends are just dead set on Corviknight and Coridon, Houndstone is the perfect pair to that. Uh, we're giving Houndstone the zoom lens. What the zoom lens does is it increases your accuracy when you go second. Hounds, Houndstone is already slow, uh, so Samurott's going to go first, and then it, that's going to increase our accuracy. Uh, that increases the accuracy to both Fire Fang. Fire Fang's 95% accurate and will o 85% accurate. So it brings both of those. Well, Fire Fang will be 100%. I think it brings will o to 97%. Um, but the bread and butter here is Howl. Howl will increase the physical attack to yourself and to all your partner Pokemon. So like I was saying earlier, Corviknight's really only way to bulk up is to use the move bulk up. And if Samurott is critical hitting nonstop, the defense part of bulk up is pretty useless and getting a plus one every turn is very slow. Um, you could attack cheer and give everyone a plus one technically, or you can bulk up yourself to get a plus one. If you do have Coridons and Corvo Knights next to you, Howling will accelerate that and it also accelerate your own. And then you can hit your Fire Fangs. Now, we we do want to lead off with a Will-O-Wisp. Obviously, we even though critical hits ignore stat changes. We, when you burn Samurott, it will decrease its attack through a critical hit. Zoom Lens will help us not be an Aaron Zhang and not miss our Will-O-Wisp. And Houndstone's ability of Fluffy will prevent so much damage from coming in. Will-O-Wisp will keep your teammates alive, it'll keep you alive, but your ability itself of Fluffy will keep this dog going. Uh, the only reason Lick is here is Lick has a 30% chance of paralyzing, so when raid shields go up, you have a chance of paralyzing, which is very helpful, very, very helpful to paralyze a raid boss if if anything you can do uh, on that end. We have Sunny Day as an option, although, if, again, if you're playing next to a Coridon player, they're going to set Sun for you, and of course you have Helping Hand, um, which you could help Coridon do more damage with Helping Hand if you feel like uh, Lick is not getting you the mileage. But Houndstone doesn't pair well with the other Pokemon in this video, but I did want to give you guys something in case you're leaning the physical route. And finally, the Pokemon, the one I'm most excited about is Toxicroak. Now, Toxicroak can be 
an absolute rock star and carry a lot of raids and actually have potential to solo this raid. Uh, but at the same time, depending on Samurott's final moveset, it could go terribly bad. With Toxicroak's ability Dry Skin, it can't get hit by any of the water type moves. And because of the poison and fighting typing, uh, it actually takes a lot of moves like Night Slash or Mega Horn and makes them not really effective. Even with no shields or no defense boost, Toxicroak takes very little damage from some of the slashing type moves that Samurai might have. Toxicroak kind of runs in trouble if Samurott has Drill Run or Ice Beam. Now, Ice Beam doesn't have high crit, and Fire type Terra will negate, will reduce that Ice Beam damage. But Toxicroak can survive a lot, and even those hard hitting moves, Toxicroak should be able to get all of its health back with the amount of damage it's doing and Shell Bell. So I will say Toxicroak is probably for a more advanced player, specifically playing with a team. But ideally, um, again, if you're the only one with chilling water, you'll want to lead with a chilling water and then you will want to acid spray to bring it down to negative six. The great thing here is Toxicroak with with acid spray and chilling water, it's going to get you to Terra as fast as possible. And then you will be able to start Terra blasting. Now, if you are playing with somebody that can set up sun, you're going to get a huge damage boost because of that. But regardless of sun or not, Terra blast is still going to do a ton of damage. You could also opt to run flying Terra type instead of fire Terra type. Um, you don't get the sun boost. You do still do a ton of damage. You also avoid drill run because drill run won't be able to hit you at all. You still have your ability to dry skin, so you still can't get hit by water type moves. The only problem is ice beam does a, a little bit more damage. It's, it's really a trade off here of what you're playing with, but ideally a, Again, even though something like Drill Run is threatening to Toxicroak, uh, the Shell Bell should get you enough health back. Um, and Toxicroak also has access to Taunt. So, like I said, I don't think we're going to see a turn zero focus energy. I do, say, I do think we're going to get the focus energy when the right shield goes up. So, when Samurott's about 70 to 60% health, you'll want to Taunt, right shield will activate, then it will no longer be able to focus energy. And you should be really good. If you have other acid sprayers with you, that's even better because you'll just be able to hit the Terra Blast button. And even if you're taking 50 to 60% damage of your health, because you're going to be doing so much damage back, you should be getting full health at the end of every turn. You could opt to run Nasty Plot or Sludge Bomb, uh, but I really think the moveset here is solid. I would maybe, again, if you have other people spamming Chilling Water, you could slide in the Nasty Plot depending on how fast or if Samurott even clears your Terra energy, um, three acid sprays gets it to negative six, and then you can just Terra Blast right into it. Toxicroak does have the highest damage output than any of the Pokemon I've shown so far, whether that is fire type Terra or flying type Terra. It can absolutely do a ton of damage and get pretty much all its health back every time it hits super uh, obviously the acid spray is not going to give a ton of health back because it's a low move but you're using acid sprays to set up the terror blast so that is all six pokemon and that's it uh if you need help uh doing samurai you can come over to twitch.tv slash pkmncst we'll be streaming on thursday night when it drops and friday night and then um i'm actually taking saturday and sunday off but we'll be back when samurai comes around again I try to help as many people get through as many raids as possible uh, over the weekend and answer any questions and, yeah, help you guys out. If there are dramatic changes or I'm terribly wrong about my raid builds, uh, I will post an updated video uh, with some tweaks. But I'm feeling really good about this. Uh, again, I could be completely wrong about the focus energy. But even if Samurott doesn't have focus energy, a lot of its moves in its arsenal do have high crit already. Yeah, again, hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time.